So we just thank God this morning and we just thank him, hallelujah, for what he's doing. Somebody just thank God right now for strengthening you. Thank God, praise God right now for him giving you the, the, the mind to go on, for giving you, hallelujah, the strength to want to, to, to remain, praise God, in the kingdom, not to fall away, not to turn back. And, and, and as I, I was listening to someone yesterday and, and, and they just, well, you know what? They said, well, God not helping me, so I'm going to help myself. That's not the attitude that God wants you to have. God wants you to know that he, when he says that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, he means that. He promised you that. So this morning, we're going to look, hallelujah, at, um, at God's strength and not your own. Praise God, not your strength, but God's strength. And he has strengthened you. He has given you, he has equipped you spiritually with everything that you need. Hallelujah to go through. Amen. Let me just pull up, praise God, my notes real quick. And I don't want to get ahead of myself. So if you would just bear with me just one moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I want to stay on task this morning because we really want to know. Hallelujah. And hear God. I don't want you to hear me, but I want you to hear God. I want you to know that, it's, that it is God. Hallelujah, it's his word. As pastor said, we're a Bible-based church. So we're gonna, we gonna stick to his word and not our own word. But we do have testimonies. We do have what God has done for us in the name of Jesus. So we just thank him and we just praise him. Hallelujah, that we're gonna go forth. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're gonna go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Praise God, and we're going to start at verse 7. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to get it going. And praise God, is my camera on? Okay, there we go. Yeah, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 7. Praise God, and we're just going to kind of remain here throughout the sermon. But in, in, in chapter 7, um, Chapter 12, verse 7, he says, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing uh, greatness of revelation, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I played with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. In verse 9, he says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. But my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So, you know, here, Paul was saying, now look, I'm not, you know, I know who I am, praise God. But he said, I don't want you all to look at me. I, I only want you to see Christ, praise God. And you know, I know sometimes we all say we 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 going through a trial. We have some tribulations. We might have uh, some kind of uh, 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 affliction in our body, or, or or we believe in God for healing. But you know what? We have to know that God has strengthened us to go through that thing. And we might say, what is the strength that God gives? He gives us strength to comprehend His greatness. His power, his promises, his love. See, God's nature and character needs to be refreshed, uh, freshly revealed to us so that we can comprehend. That's why we have to be in this Bible daily. That's why we have to, that's why we say we have a relationship with Christ. We have a relationship with the Father so that he reminds us, praise God, we're not in this thing by ourselves. You know, we don't have to be perfect. Our Father is perfect, praise God. You know, one thing I share with a uh, pastor and my, my daughter and my, and my grandkids all the time, I say that, I tell them, I say, I'm not perfect, praise God. No one is perfect but the Father. I might error, I might make a mistake. And I tell them, I do the best I can to live all I know to live. But at the same time, 
time, praise God, I let them know I'm human, praise God. And so that's why I rely upon the Father. I rely upon God's strength, praise God. But we have to rely upon him. God's uh, denial of Paul's request for healing turned out to be a blessing in Apostle Paul's life. And you might say in your life, well, well, Pastor, I just don't see how what I'm going through can ever be a blessing to me. But I, I pray at the end of this message that you would have God would change your perspective, that he would change the way that you're looking at what you're going through. And I tell you, from 2019 up until 2024, praise God, has every day uh, been a good day? No. Has every day uh, been a blessing? No. Have some days been blessed? Yes. Have there been some good times? Yes. Have, God, have there been some victories? Yes. But have there been some warfare? Yes. Praise God. But through it all, praise God, through his strength, through his grace, through his mercy, praise God, he has kept us. Amen. And I think we can all say that. One commentary, he explained that thorn that Paul had like this. It kept Paul from imagining himself as a spiritual superman. I don't remember if you remember a few weeks ago, you recall that I told you Paul, he was a scholar among scholars, that he was a well-educated, well-learned uh, man. But then uh, this sounds, well, this was a way, hallelujah, that God uh, kept him uh, humble. Uh, he explained that uh, even that he didn't think himself to be more than he ought. And he revealed to him the reality of his human mortality and weakness despised his extraordinary revelations. See, even though Paul got these revelations, even though God kept uh, using him and, and after he had had his change uh, and he became a Christian, God still wanted to keep uh, Paul close to his heart. Because sometimes, you know, when we get the things that we want in life, all of a sudden we don't have time for God. We don't pray them prayers every day like we used to pray. We don't, we don't have that closeness with God. We're not seeking him in the morning time, hallelujah. We're not getting that fresh manner as it comes down. So this was, um, so one commentary said, well, this is the way that, that God and Paul kept their relationship intact. The thorn uh, also kept Paul pent close to the Lord in trust and in confidence. See, there's some things that you might say that God has taken you through. Praise God that nobody can tell you anything about God now. If we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10, it says, for the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardship, persecution, and calamities. But when I am weak, then am I strong. See, Paul got a revelation in this thing. And this morning, that's what I want you to get a revelation. I want you to know that when you are weak, you are strong. Hallelujah. When the devil come to tell you that, that you have lost the battle, that's when you start praising God and say, Lord, I have won the battle. Praise God. But you know, God never lost the battle. He never lost the case in the courtroom. Hallelujah. He's, he's never lost a battle. Hallelujah. If you go to your word, he, he tells us all the time that we are triumphant. We are victorious. And see, Paul had this revelation. He said, no matter how down I might feel, no matter the persecutions, no matter the hardships that I am, he said, but when I'm weak, then I am strong. He learned how to be strong in the midst of every crisis, in the midst of every circumstances, in the midst of everything that didn't feel good to his emotions. It didn't feel good to his body. It's everything, praise God, Paul began to say, I'm strong in this thing. Paul, he stopped protesting his situation and began to boast and even take pleasure in the weakness so that the power of Christ could work through him. Uh, that is why for Christ's sake, he, he said, I'm delighted in weakness and insults and in hardships and in persecution and in difficulties. But when I weak, then am I strong? See, you have to get a revelation this morning about this thing. If you start taking, hallelujah, when I, I was uh, ministering to a sister yesterday, I said, sometimes all we can do is put one foot in front of another. Sometimes all we can do, hallelujah, 
and we can't do nothing, hallelujah, but raise up one hand and say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah, you do that, and then you become strong. God will do the rest. God will make a way for the rest. He'll open up the door to do the rest. Oh, you, you say, how is God made a, a perfect in weakness? You know, I'm going to tell you this morning, if you just follow the word of God, if you just take this word, praise God, and do like Paul, no matter what you're going through, you might be saying, well, Pastor, my finances is just messed up. You know, I, I, I want my bills paid on time. I, you know, but praise God for the bills that you can pay. Praise God and ask him, say, Lord, show me how to take what I do have in my hand and how to pay what I can. Show me how, I, how, how you can bless my finances. He, was, he will always, just like he gave revelation to Paul, he'll give revelation to you. If you ask him, if you seek him, if you go to, to him, see the strength you, you, the strength you want most may not be the strength you need most. Sometimes you don't know what's good for you, but God knows what's good for you. He knows, hallelujah, how to bless you. Sometimes the things that we're asking God for, is it really going to be a blessing to us or is it going to be a curse to us? Have we really learned our life lessons, praise God? I'm talking to a minister and to another sister, and we were talking about some of the revelations about David, hallelujah. But in this thing, I say, you know, these people in the Bible, they did not live perfect lives. But what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to learn from their life situation. And we're supposed to learn how they went to God and how they obtained victory and how God brought them through when they totally released the circumstances and the situations to God and how they saw miracles and signs and wonders in their life. See, so what we, you might think you want uh, most may not be the strength you need most because the weakness you feel may not be the real source of your weakness. We, uh, when we begin to feel weak and exhausted, it may be that we're physically worn out from work, from relationships, from parenting, and from life. The strength we really need most uh, from God today isn't defined by what, can, what we can do in the flesh. In, in, in your own uh, self, praise God. But because well, the most important thing is that he has called us today to run deeper and higher in, in, in the relationship with him, in the things of God. It's not what you typically see or feel. It's not about um, what you can see in the natural. We are supernatural beings. We need miracles. Some of you all need supernatural miracles today. You need divine intervention. You are at that scripture where it say, what's impossible for man is possible with God. See, Paul understood this. That's why he learned how to live in the power of Christ. That's why he learned how to, how to be content. Hallelujah, going through these hardships because he knew that God was going to work it out, hallelujah, for his good. As, as we say when pastors say, you know, you don't pray against people, but you ask God, to, and, and ask God, say, Lord, say, work it out, Lord God, hallelujah, so that it will benefit, everybody will be blessed in this thing. Oh, praise God. I want, I want to get to the point. I want you to understand the revelation, praise God, that no matter if you're going through something, I know sometimes you might say, well, Lord, God, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with some legal matters over here. I'm dealing with uh, uh, this situation and that situation. See, you can't do it. You got to rely on God to do it. That's why when, um, praise God, when uh, Solomon said he cast his bread up on the water, when he cast that bread on, when he was casting, praise God, he, he, he was spitting it out there. And he said, but now I know, hallelujah, how God, go, I don't know how God's going to bring it back to me. But he trusted God. He believed in the power of God. He believed in what his father told him, what David told him. And this is how we have to be. We have to rely upon God's strength. We have to rely that he is with us. Uh, he said the words were made perfect in Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 9. And then that means fully or entirely accomplished or made, made complete. 
see, every, God know how to complete everything, every miracle, every sign, every wonder. He know how to bring it to fruition. He know how to make it complete. He know how to fully have it come to purpose in your life the way that it's supposed to come. But sometimes, dear one, sometimes, praise God, we want it the way we want it because the world has told us we want it now. And we, 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 we want what we want when we want it, praise God. But that is not God's way, praise God. Some of us, praise God, we have in our mindset and we're thinking, well, this is the way God made me. But if that may be the way that God made you, you still have to humble yourself. You have to be pliable. You gotta be like, you gotta be like the, um, on the potter's wheel, but he's trying to mold you. He's trying to make you. He's trying to shape you for that miracle. He's trying to mold you into something so that you can, hallelujah, flow in greatness and, and in that, that purpose that he ordained for you when you came to this earth, praise God. So everything has to be accomplished. And every purpose, hallelujah, it has to come to its fullness. It has to be complete. Christ's power is made complete. It's able to accomplish its purpose. But people are weak and depend on him for strength. Praise God. See, I know that I'm weak, praise God. But I know that I'm strengthened in Christ, praise God. I know that I have flaws. I know, hallelujah, that I don't always get it right. But I know that I serve a perfect God. When we, like Paul, stop resisting and complaining and let the power of Christ rest on us, we made room to receive the countless unexpected blessings from the Lord by allowing God's strength to be made uh, perfect in our weakness. We have the opportunity to, to, to display God's glory fall, faultlessly. See, you know what? This is what I'm saying. God is perfect. Over and over, the Bible gives us an example of God's strength manifesting his uh, people are weak. Moses, the great leader of Israel, was deeply aware of his human shortcomings. Uh, if we look in Exodus chapter 4, when the Lord called him to go to Pharaoh, Moses cried, I'm not adequate. He said, please send somebody else. But God replied, go anyway, Moses, because I will be with you. Moses kept complaining, God, I can't do it. If we go on down to chapter 4, verse 12, hallelujah, we see God said, now therefore go. And I will be with, with, with your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. But he said, oh, my Lord, please send someone else. Here Moses still telling God, Lord, I can't go. Here God himself speaking to him, telling him, I'm going to give you the words to say. All you got to do is open up your mouth. But he said, oh, my Lord, please send somebody else. In verse 14, it said, then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. See, God, will, he will say, even though sometimes we go to God and we complain, he'll still make a way out of no way. He still prepared Aaron. And Aaron was happy, praise God, to see Moses. And then he said in verse 15, you shall speak to him and put words in his mouth and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you both what to do. Praise God. I think about that somehow when I was reading this this morning. Praise God. I thought about Pastor William and Pastor Brian and Elder Carl and uh, uh, Elder Randolph and Minister Wendy. I thought about that. How praise God. How, how God will speak. Hallelujah. He'll speak things to Moses and he just, and Moses had to speak it to Aaron. And sometimes that's how God uses pastor. God, God will speak some to pastor and he has to speak it to us. Praise God. And when he's speaking to us, we have to know that it's coming from God. Praise God. So this is what God wants us to become pliable this morning. He wants us to know, praise God, that we don't have to rely upon ourselves, praise God. He's with us. He's going to make a way. Now, let's look at this kind of strength. Seven uh, words leaped off the page at me recently when I was reading about Saul. You know Saul, and, uh, and then he later became apostle Paul. You know, and, and this thing just been stirring in me because I've been praying and, and, and praying a different way because 
I said, Lord, if you know, as pastors say, when he know that you're going through something, it, not only does it touch God, praise God, but then it touches pastor's heart. It touches my heart, praise God. And as we begin, hallelujah, to agree with you and we begin to pray with you, we want you to know, even though you're going through what you're going through, praise God, God is strengthening you in that thing. He's helping you. So as these seven uh, words leaked off the page of me recently when I was uh, uh, studying, Paul in Acts 9, uh, it, then he was called Saul, increased all the more in strength. Acts chapter 9, verse uh, 22, I read the whole thing. It says, but Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. See, all the time, praise God, even though we think we're going through something, and we'll say, well, Lord, other people are watching us. But if you just follow Christ, if you just do what you're supposed to do, and everything Paul went through, all those people, hallelujah, that was against him, all those that he had learned with and studied with when he was Saul, praise God, he proved to them that Jesus was the Christ, the, uh, the risen Christ. And, and, and then what happened when Christ had arisen, praise God, this is when he blinded Saul after confronting him on the Damascus road. My God, Saul was so disorientated and he and all awestruck that he refused to eat or drink for three days. He was physically depleted, to say the least. And when Ananias laid hands on Saul and healed and anointed him, Luke immediately uh he, uh, he saw something like scales fall from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose, and he was baptized, and he was uh, taking food, and he was strengthened. Now, sometimes, you know what? We might be weak in the flesh, and we can eat and praise God, and we can feel pretty good. Praise God. But, uh, and, and the food helped him. It, it, it helped Saul get his, uh, his, his flesh Hallelujah, back strengthened, you know, what, that he had lost while he was fasting. But if we go on down, the word of, of Luke uses uh, strength uh, in the next three verses later is different. It, 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 it was different. He said, Saul increased. He said, Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was Christ. See, this is what I'm talking about. When you, when you think you're going through and others are watching you, see all these people that he had been taught by. And see, this is what I'm saying. When you're going through a vow, when you're going through your affliction, when you're going through hardships or trials, or and, and you're going, you might have a family situation or whatever it might be, you have to know that God is with you. you say, well, I, I, I don't know what to do. I, 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 I've given it to God. You just continually to give it to God. You just continually say, Lord, I, I just don't know what to do, but God knows what to do. He knows what's best. In Acts uh, 9 and 22, Luke uses the Greek word uh, of this strength in various forms. 86 times in the, in the gospel, in the books of Acts, and none of them are talking about food and sleep. But we're talking about the power and the ability, and very often the power and ability to do the supernatural, to understand and, is, and explain the word of God. And, and that's in Acts uh, chapter 18, verse 24. So when you need, hallelujah, things to happen in your life, and some things are going to happen that maybe you can't explain. Praise God. I've had some healings take place in my body, and I haven't shared some things with people that God had did for me for years, but then the Lord said, it's time I want you to share it. It's time that I want you to, uh, you know, give the other miracles and healings that I did in your body. See, let me tell you something. God just don't only, if he healed you one time, if he heal, he'll heal you again. He'll heal you the second time. He'll heal you the third time. He'll heal you as many times as he need to, praise God, because he, he's that kind of supernatural God. And we don't have to understand how he does it. You know, all we have to do is understand what the word of God says. And, and, and uh, 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 we understand what in Luke chapter 9, he talked about it again to heal. Uh, he talked about it in Acts um, 
uh, chapter 10 and uh, verse 38, he talked about how to do good, praise God. See, in all these things, praise God, he was talking about spiritual things. In Acts 8 and 13, he was talking about how to witness uh, about Jesus. See, we have to know, praise God, that God has us covered. All we have to do, if seriously, if you stay in your word, if you apply that word, if you think on these things, if you think on things that are of a good report, if you think on things, what's the name of is pure, if you think on these things, if you meditate on these things, see, then, you know, God will bless you because you're keeping your mind renewed by the word of God. And then whatever's in your heart, praise God, if you keep meditating on it in your heart, you keep trusting and believing in that word and you keep walking in that thing. See, in, in fact, many of these texts refer directly, indirectly to what God himself can do. Uh, in Luke chapter 1, 37, it says, for no word from God will ever fail. You all, that's my scripture. Praise God. I had, I, the, one morning I was praying and, and I said, Lord, I pray, and, and it's so many scriptures that we use over and over again, but this, this one, praise God, got, it stuck out to me. It said, no, in Luke chapter 1, 37, for no word from God will ever fail. See, Sister Chalen, no word from God will ever fall to the ground. It's going to increase. It's going to multiply. It's going it, it, to produce in your life, praise God. You just have to believe that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Sarah, stand and stand and stand and pray. And God is your lawyer. God is your lawyer. Just stand and praise God. That, that God's word will not fail. It will not fail. Praise so many other of you. Hallelujah. Can't call out everything. Praise God. But I'm, I'm here to tell you this morning that God is strengthening you. All you got to do, praise God, is just uh, tell God, I know that you're, you're performing a miracle. I'm looking for my sign. I'm expecting it every day. Praise God. Uh, it, and it tells in Luke chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Jesus forgives and he heals, heals a, a paralyzed man. See, these were all things, praise God, that people were going through, praise God. And, and even in their, within themselves, they couldn't do anything about it. But God, his word don't fail. And we have to know that. When Saul increased all the more in strength, when he first got converted, Saul, he had to increase. It didn't say all at once he became a giant in Christ. He had to grow into this thing. He had to mature in this thing. It came one miracle at a time. It came one sign at a time, one wonder at a time. And it, it said God, he wasn't refreshing his body to survive another day, but he was filling him with power to do the impossible. That is the strength you and I need mostly, most today. See, we're stronger in God so we can live and serve and work in that kind of strength. In, in God's strength. See, God is strong. God is mighty. I'm not that strong. I'm, I, I, I don't never proclaim to be all of that. But I know in the God in whom I serve, he's all of that. Paul, who we also know as the Apostle Paul, he went on, he wrote them 13 letters to the churches, and he used the same verb seven times in his writing. Each one uncovered an aspect of the real, genuine strength we need to do spiritually in the impossible things in our life. Praise God. This is why I, I've been in this for a few months with, with Paul and how he and, and the things he went through because he learned something about the miracles of God. He learned something about those signs of what Paul learned, praise God. He learned I, this thorn, it may not may not have to be removed from my side, praise God. This thing don't, but one thing I do know, I do know that when I'm weak, God is strong. He learned something in this thing. He learned, praise God, that I'm not in this by myself, but God is in there with me. He's strengthening your strength with God's strength, not my own strength. Paul got that revelation. You know, I was blessed when one sister called, praise God, and she wanted us to agree in prayer. Praise God. Pray that, that God will work a miracle in another legal battle in somebody's life. And I just praise God, even in all of this, praise God, 
that God is working signs and miracles and wonders today. Under everybody in the sound of my voice, Hundari Oshaka, and in, in Habaka, and those who are indirectly, hallelujah, but in any way that you are attached, hallelujah, to this ministry, I believe this is a season and a time that God is reveling some things to you that you don't have to. Uh, it may seem like you're weak, hallelujah, but God is preparing blessings to you. And when when, when he said he is for, to pre prepare the table for you, what's going to happen? People are going to say, but I thought you was down. I thought you was sick. I thought your finances, I thought your business wasn't there. But all of a sudden, they're going to look up, and you're going to be blessed. But how? Because it's, it, it came about supernaturally, because you didn't do it in your own strength. God did it in his strength, in his power, in his ability. Praise God. And that's why in Ephesians chapter 6 and 10, Paul said, he said, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Hallelujah, not in yours, but in his might, of his might. When you experience real, real strength, it will not be because you finally tapped into your strength, but because you finally gave up relying on your own strength. So the society may want you to believe that you're filled with unbound potential. You know how they tell you in a motivational speech, oh, you all the potential on the inside of you. And, and they say, just look within, your, within yourself, praise God. I'm not that silly, praise God. I know, hallelujah, that I, I looked up from where's my help coming from. If I look to the hill, that's where my strength come from. Oh, my God, if I look, hallelujah, to my heavenly Father, that's where my help coming from, praise God. But see, some society, they want you to believe that you got all this potential locked up on the inside of you. Praise God, God know the talents, gifts, and the ability. He anointed you with it. And what you have to do, you have to flow and hallelujah become pliable in Christ. Praise God. You got to let him lead you and guide you. You got to flow in the spirit. Praise God to obtain these things. But see, hallelujah, but the key to achieving anything meaningful or lasting is realizing that we will not achieve anything truly meaningful or lasting on our own. If you feel weak, you do not need more of you. You need more of God. Praise the Lord. You've got to have more of God. You've got to have more of him. You've got to be strengthened to speak. You don't have to be, God needs to strengthen your mouth to speak his word, praise God, to speak his word over your finances, to speak his word over your body, to speak his word over your family. The Lord, he said uh, in Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 17, that the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all Gentiles might hear it. See, you got to know, hallelujah, that everybody who ministers the word of God, everybody who, who speaks, every believer, praise God, we have to, we know that it's coming from God. It's, it's God's word. We don't only serve God in strength, but we also serve and us to say something about him. When we talk about Jesus, it should give us strength. When we talk about what God can do, it should strengthen us. See, we don't uh, need strength merely to do the right thing at home, at work, in our neighborhoods, but to speak up about the courage and the boldness of Jesus. I promise you, it's something about when you start talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't care how bad I feel. I don't care, hallelujah, that I can feel like Hallelujah, I'm on my sick bed, but let me start thinking about Jesus. Let me start uh, talking about Jesus, and I feel better, praise God. Something happens on the inside. Something begins to happen in my soul, in my spirit, man. Somehow my heart and my mind begin to get better, Some, and, and then the Holy Spirit just shows up. So sometimes it just takes you, praise God. Again, let's talk about the word. Again, let's talk about the deliverance of Jesus. Again, let's talk about how, how, he, how he healed uh, the man at the case. He said, uh, Peter and Paul said, Sim and go, have I none, but such as I have, I give unto you. All they had was prayer, praise God. All they had was Jesus. All they knew was a heavenly father. Oh, God, let me come on, because now I can preach this thing. Praise God, because I feel like my help 
has shown up this morning because God wants you to realize this morning, praise God, it's not on your strength that you're going to attain, but God's strength. In his, when you're weak, praise God, God is working a miracle for you. When you think you're too sick to raise up your hand, praise God, hallelujah, healing is right there with you. Again, to say, I praise God for my healing. When you get the uh, papers in the mail, hallelujah, from the courts, Begin to say, God, hallelujah, I know what's on this paper. But God, I know in heaven that you know how, how to fix this paper to work out for my good. You begin to rely upon God. Let me go on to Philippians chapter 4. Hallelujah, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. It says, not that I am speaking of being in need, but I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Verse 12. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of faith, faith and plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Somebody ought to say this morning, I can do all things in him, in him, through him, through him, through him that strengthens me. You can do all things. You can become Hallelujah, that powerful executive. Hallelujah, you can become a powerful business owner. You can become the heal. You can become the deliver. You can become the set free. You can become under your shutter. Whatever you need to be in Christ Jesus. Because it Paul said, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. All you got to do is do it through the Lord. All you got to do is give up and tell God, Lord, I can't do it, but I know you can. Lord, in the power, in the power, in the resurrection power, I can do it. It's not in my God, but I know that you are the mighty one. You are the sovereign God. Praise the Lord. When you begin to think like this, your mindset changes. Hallelujah. When you come into, hallelujah, that, 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 um, Authority. When you come get that revelation, praise God, that you can't do it, but God can. I tell you all the time, I can't do it, praise God, but one thing I can do, I can pray, I can believe, I can trust him, I can agree with you in prayer, and we can join our faith, hallelujah, because by the Bible says the blood, the word, and the spirit agree on earth, praise God. And when we come together and we agree in prayer, something happens in the heavens. Hallelujah, manifestations happen. Miracles begin to take place. God began to loose angels on your behalf to go forth and do things in the earth realm that you cannot do. Hallelujah, you got to believe in the word. You got to believe in angels. You got to believe in the miracles. You got to believe in divine intervention. You got to believe that Bible from Genesis to Revelation and every word in the thing. Oh my God, somebody better hear the word of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, because God want to change somebody's situation. He's strengthening you. He's strengthening us for every circumstance. When Saul increased all the more strength as a new believer and ambassador for Christ, God was strengthening and equipping him to face anything, hunger, and plenty in abundance. It's a reminder that we need uh, his, this strength as much in his blessings and that we do in suffering as much in success and we do in failure as much as in health as we do in sickness we need them all the time that's what it's saying you need them all the time all the time you need god to show up praise god let it be through his might through his will through his salvation for your life not in yourself god strengthens us not only to defy evil Hallelujah, but he sent us to serve others, to share boldly, but to be content in every circumstance, to experience a deep and a confident joy in him, regardless of our weaknesses and trials. You know, I used to wonder, I, you know, I, I, I sit back and I wonder, hallelujah, my mother, praise God, she's heading toward 90 years old. But you know what, I, I, one day I was wondering, I said, God, how did she endure? all the things that would come up. And I remember as a little girl, I would go to her and I would say, mom, what are we gonna do? And she said, we're not gonna do anything. She said, it's gonna be okay. God's gonna work it out for us. And I remember seeing her, how she would pray. And I remember seeing her, you know, and I, I have a statue in, in my prayer room. 
uh, uh, this woman praying. It reminds me of how my mother always took everything to God and praying. Our favorite song is, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. You got to learn how to take everything to God in prayer because we don't always have the answer. We don't always, but she, she didn't tell me, but she showed me that in prayer we could take it to God. And I promise you everything will work out all right. This, this morning, just want to wrap this up. God's strength is made perfect in weakness. When we put our faith and our trust in him, the Lord's presence is all we need in times of weakness. His great power and sufficiency rests on us as we find our strength in him, and he is glorified. We can say, as the psalmist David said in Psalms uh, chapter 73 and verse 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Hallelujah. Praise God.